Once a research chemist, Elizabeth Zott was a woman with flawless skin and an unmistakable demeanor of someone who was not average and never would be. She was, as all good stars are, discovered. Although in Elizabeth's case, there was no malt shop, no accidental bench sighting, no lucky introduction. Instead, it was theft, specifically food theft, that led to her discovery. The story was simple. A child named Amanda Pine, who enjoyed food in a way some therapists consider significant, was eating Madeline's lunch. This was because Madeline's lunch was not average. While all the other children gummed their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, Madeline opened her lunchbox to find a thick slice of leftover lasagna, a side helping of buttery zucchini, an exotic kiwi cut into quarters, five pearly round cherry tomatoes, a tiny Morton salt shaker, two still warm chocolate chip cookies, and a red plaid thermos full of ice cold milk. These contents were why everyone wanted Madeline's lunch, Madeline included. But Madeline offered it to Amanda because friendship requires sacrifice, but also because Amanda was the only one in the entire school who didn't make fun of the odd child Madeline already knew she was. It wasn't until Elizabeth noticed that Madeline's clothes began to hang on her bony frame like bad drapes that she began to wonder what was going on. According to her calculations, Madeline's daily intake was exactly what her daughter required for optimal development, making weight loss scientifically inconceivable. A growth spurt, then? No, she'd accounted for growth in her calculations. Early-onset food disorder? Not likely. Madeline ate like a horse at dinner. Leukemia? Definitely not. Elizabeth wasn't an alarmist. She wasn't the type who lay awake at night imagining her daughter was plagued by incurable disease. As a scientist, she always sought a sensible explanation, and the moment she met Amanda Pine, her little lips stained a pomodoro sauce red, she knew she'd found it. Mr. Pine, Elizabeth said, sweeping into the local television studio and past his secretary on a Wednesday afternoon. I've been calling you for three days, and not once have you managed the courtesy of a return call. My name is Elizabeth Zott. I am Madeline Zott's mother. Our children attend Woody Elementary together, and I'm here to tell you that your daughter is offering my daughter friendship under false pretenses. And because he looked confused, she added, Your daughter is eating my daughter's lunch. L lunch Walter Pine managed, as he took in the woman who stood resplendent before him, her white lab coat casting an aura of holy light save for one detail, the initials E-Z emblazoned in red just above the pocket. Your daughter Amanda, Elizabeth charged again, eats my daughter's lunch. Apparently it's been going on for months. Walter could only stare. Tall and angular, with hair the color of burnt buttered toast pulled back and secured with a pencil, she stood, hands on hips, her lips unapologetically red, her skin luminous, her nose straight. She looked down at him like a battlefield medic assessing whether or not he was worth saving. And the fact that she pretends to be Madeline's friend to get her lunch, she continued, is absolutely reprehensible. Who, who are you again? stammered Walter. Elizabeth Zott, she barked back, Madeline Zott's mother. Walter nodded, trying to understand. As a longtime producer of afternoon television, he knew drama. But this? He continued to stare. She was stunning. He was literally stunned by her. Was she auditioning for something? I I'm sorry, he finally said, but all the nurse roles have been cast. I beg your pardon, she snapped. There was a long pause. Amanda Pine, she repeated. He blinked. M my daughter? Oh, he said, suddenly nervous. W what about her? Are you a doctor? Are you from the school? He leapt to his feet. Oh, good God, no, Elizabeth replied. I'm a chemist. I've come all the way over here from Hastings on my lunch hour because you failed to return my calls.